am here as a mother and a grandmother who cares about my daughter and my grandchildren. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The UK government has given the green light to a company to go ahead and frack and has disregarded all the warnings that fracking present a serious threat to our environment. Yeah. Yeah. It gives me, it warms my heart to know that this morning between 120 and 200 um, people from the beautiful town of Balcom walked down to say thank you to all those who are here demonstrating against Quadrilla. And as well, it makes me so happy to know that apparently in the last poll, 85% of the people who live in Balkan said they don't want to see this fracking company destroy their environment and their countryside. And all the companies that will obtain permits because the people will prevail are our voices will prevail. We can stand together. We can defeat them. And we must send a clear message to the UK government that we will remember because this is done against our will. Because Mr. Osborne is trying to fool us by telling us that this will bring the price of energy. Uh, that this will bring jobs, that this will bring, that it will, this will be a panacea for the country. What he's not telling us is that this will be a fracking nightmare. I live four miles away. I started Frack Free Sussex and I've been shouting about it as loudly as I possibly can on social media. We've been writing to the Environment Agency. We've given up on petitions long since. I've knocked on the door of number 10. They are not listening. The Environment Agency held a lip service public consultation about the mining waste permit. They got nine, 900 detailed articulate responses as to why they shouldn't issue it. Three days later, they issued it regardless, citing low public interest. I personally have given up on the legislatory process. These people here that Ian's spoken about, their, uphold, their oath is to protect life and property. Yes. Yes. The main London to Brighton railway line <laughs> is right there. This company is inept. They are cowboys. They have a 50% failure rate in Lancashire. They damaged two of their four yes. wells. They continued to frack a damaged well and didn't inform anyone. We don't know what's happened down there or what they've left down there. Tremors. They've been censured by the Advertising Standards Authority for lying in their leaflets to residents. They've just been done for trespass. It's just been announced now with their seismic monitoring on people's land. They continued drilling beyond their permissions, flouting the regulations that are supposed to protect overwintering birds. This bore is less than a mile from the river and the reservoir. It's two and a half miles from the Millennium Seed Bank. Many of our ministers and our MPs have got this line, there is no evidence of any harm. There's no evidence, there's never been a case of contamination. Okay, if anybody is still doubting that, Google something called list of the harmed by the Pennsylvania Clean Air and Water yeah. Alliance and there are up to probably more now, 1,500 families and these are just the ones who've dared to speak out because they've signed non-disclosure agreements about the neurological problems in their children, the cancers, the silicosis in their lungs. The workers are getting silicosis in their lungs from the sand, from the silica sand. In Australia, the coal seam gas industry, which is coal bed methane here, which is already happening in Scotland and they want to do in, in Somerset and it also involves fracking, People are really, really ill. Livestock's dying. I've seen film of cat's eyes bleeding. This isn't melodrama. This isn't swivel-eyed, eco-loon, new age nonsense. This is real. It is an ecocidal technology. And it's a juggernaut that our government is trying to force through. David Cameron, in an EU summit in Brussels, about three weeks ago, said, no regulation must get in the way of shale gas exploitation in Europe. What mania is this? What is this political mania that makes him, George Osborne, Peter Lilly, Boris Johnson, excuse me when I spit, self-serving, lie to us? 
lie to us. They're either misinformed or they're willfully lying. Bill Gates gave them too much at Bill and something is very, very wrong here. I was brought up to trust this system, to trust the political system, to trust the police. I'm a nice white middle class girl, went to a school in London, and it's all fine, and we have a democracy. We do not have a democracy. These people are being, in, are being made, these people in these uniforms, who've got very dangerous technology on their shoulders that's hurting them, are being made to force through, physically force through these lorries containing hydrochloric acid, huge, horrible drill bits that are violating our earth. They're supposed to be protecting us. us. Something's very, very wrong. Yep. We have to wake up and smell the methane now. <laughs> what, at what point, my question is, and I've never done anything unlawful, I've done everything I can from going to number 10 to signing petitions, at what point do we claim self-defence? Now. Yeah, yeah. now. Now. The village I'm in has five and a half thousand people in it. I understand that 70% of us drink from Ardingly Reservoir. We are one of many, many villages that are around the reservoir. So it doesn't just affect Borkhamm, it affects tens of thousands of people. At this moment, at this well, Quadrilla are going to be boring it and then they're actually going to be pouring in a 10% mix of hydrochloric acid along with acetic acid. They originally wanted a 20% mix, but they were told that 10%. When they drill that and they pour half a million litres, so if we do the maths on that, that's a lot of hydraulic acid, hydrochloric acid, sorry. Um, we will find that there's more chemicals in there. I don't know what the full base of that is yet. But once that is actually poured through our aquifer into the ground, it's not all going to come back. So where does that go? And that's our biggest concern. Ardingly Reservoir is less than a mile away from here. There are streams surrounding this field. We have chalies. We have an area of natural beauty. It's extraordinary here. And it's not just about protecting the prettiness of it. It's about protecting the absolute nutritiousness that's here around us. It's an extraordinary place. It's full of eco and biodiversity. And they're going to destroy it. Dr. Ingrafia from Cornell University has been doing lectures in America. He was one of the originators of hydraulic fracturing. He's an engineer. He understands that well bores are not safe. They will degrade. And there is a percentage that originally degrades. Six and a half percent of all wells degrade. After six years, 50 percent degrade. That's fact from a professor of a university. He says and states that very clearly. Quadrilla, once they've drilled their bore, if they find oil, they'll drill more than one well. And after they've drilled that and they continue to drill it, there's an accumulative effect. Now that could mean that methane starts to come into our waterways. It could mean that we start to see other chemicals arrive. Now, we don't want that into our reservoir. We don't want that. And that's why we're protesting.